Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I have a viewer requested video today. A uh, viewer emailed me and asked me about my little portable power station I built a while back, the little ammo can station with the little 150 watt inverter, and asked me would I do a capacity test and a teardown on the little XNY battery that is inside the power station. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna capacity test the little battery and do a little teardown and see how it's built. So let's get right into it. So the little battery's got about, I don't know, maybe 50 cycles on it, something like that. I use a little power station several times and I don't remember the exact count of cycles that's on this little uh, little battery right here. But uh, anyhow, I got it fully topped off and uh, we're looking for 230.4 watt hours. So I made a modification to my capacity rig right here. I'm gonna test on inverter. That's right, a little bitty tiny battery on a 1500 watt inverter. Not gonna get a huge draw out of it. I'm gonna have some sense about me when I pull it down, but I made some quick down and dirty test leads to go to the F2 terminals on this battery uh, with some split bolt connectors right here. You know, it's not permanent, but for this test it's fine. So let me hook it up and uh, I'll run it down and see what it's made of. So I guess this will set the record as the smallest capacity battery I've had hooked up to the 12 volt test rig, but for consistent results, gonna use the same instrumentation. I uh, can't push it too hard, but a 20 amp BMS in it. So you get a load hooked up and uh, pull it down. See the energy meter's cleared out. The battery is at rest now. So I'm gonna power up the inverter and we're gonna count, see if we can get the full 230.4 out of it. So the inverter is on, powered up off the little battery, pulling 13 watts because I have a power supply already turned on. And that's what I'm gonna do for the load. I'm gonna charge this battery right here with this so I can control the amperage or current come out of this battery right here so let me hook that up and i'm probably going to pull it down it's rated at 20. uh i'm gonna try to hit it right at 10 amps out of this battery right here right, the test is underway pulling four amps out of the little xny i'm going to turn the current up on this charger i'm going to try to dial it in right at 10. so i'm going to go up real slow with it try to get it right at 10 amps coming out of the little xny bear with me for just a second everybody all right, right there. Well, 9.99 to 10 amps, uh, 127 watts. So a half a C roughly rate coming out of the little small battery going over here to this other battery, charging it up. So robbing Peter to pay Paul, but hey, it works. So I'm gonna let it pull like this for a little while. I get about half capacity wise. I'll turn the other charger up and give this uh, X and Y battery a couple of hits just to see what it's made of and try to take it up to its full 20 amps, but I want to get a, a decent capacity right now at first before I start beating on the battery. So almost halfway through its rated capacity by the numbers. Uh, half would be right around 115. We're at 112 right now. So I'm a little X and Y. So I'm going to turn up the power supply right there and push it a little bit right to its BMS limit of 20 amps. Well, let's give it a pop. Let me give it a pop up to, let me just max it out and see what it's got for a minute. 29 amps coming out of the little X and Y. So that's about a minute at 30 amps. So I will turn the turn the current back down on it right here. Get back down to around 10 amps. The remainder of the test at 10 amps to get a reliable capacity indicator anyhow. This was not meant to be a surge test or anything like that. Just a capacity run on it. So I'll leave it right there for the rest of the test. The voltage on the battery is starting to flatline, so it's probably gonna drop out any second now. Almost made it to its mark. Ah, there we went. You let it reset the BMS, because it tripped on low voltage, let it come back up, and I'll see what the final total was. Roughly three minutes, and the BMS reset itself. So there we are, 10.86 volts after the BMS came back on and 227 watt hours, just a tick below its rating. So I was making sure I was telling you the right specs on this battery, I had to go find my little my little manual here. That is the 18 amp hour manual for the battery that was in that ammo can. So there's some of the specs right there. Uh, 18 amp hours, 230.4 watt hours, recommended charge of four amp, 0.2 C. And if, if I would have probably discharged it at that 0.2 C rate, I'd have probably got the full capacity. And then there's a max continuous charge of 20, discharge of 20, and uh, peak discharge 40 amp for five seconds. So there's some specs on it too, if you're curious. 
All right, now I'll crack the lid on it, a little quick little tear down on this little mini battery, and see what we got going on. So I got the lid cracked loose. It kind of, once it went, it kind of went, so I wasn't really no saving the last little bit of tearing the lid off for everybody to look at, but anyways, that's besides the point. So what do we got in this battery? We got cylindrical cells in this battery, and that looks like a Sihang BMS. Let me get around here, see what the numbers are on this. Get you to focus right there and say sh0420 sihang so that would be a 4s 20 amp bms from sihang balance leads soldered connections right there and we got a sensor right here ntc sensor and the leads are soldered to the terminals on the top right there there's our cell connectors called cylindricals they're they're spot welded down so i'll work on getting this epoxy board fiber board cover off for you right there and there's x and y serial number it looks like right there with the tag and then we got a moisture indicator label in there and that one's dry so that's good so let me uh, go down a little bit further into the pack and let me make a note on the wire size right there 14 gauge 200 degree uh, silicone jacketed wires on the positive and the negative lead making note i am going to take the balance lead off because the way the wires are tight and routed in there i cannot get the epoxy board off without pulling the balance leads from the board so there's the cell pack arrangement right there cylindrical cells uh, groups of three paralleled together and then series to a 4s to make 12 volts so each cylindrical cell would be six amp hours of capacity i tried to get you a number on the side right there but i cannot really see it at this angle and I can't, I'm not gonna pull the pack out, the cylindrical cells out, cause I'm afraid I will break the little bus bars cause they're just spot welded on. So that's as far as I'm gonna go down into the pack, but just wanted to show you how it's made right there. Uh, everything looks pretty good. You know, considering it's a little tiny battery, it's you know, professionally spot welded. I don't see any loose spot welds, uh, anything like that. So, you know, everything's looking fine. I know you can't see that. I can't get the camera, but these cells are rated at 19.2 watt hours at 3.2 volts so that would be right at you know six amp hours uh just as i'd assume so you know nothing nothing odd going on down here everything looks pretty good so uh there's an ntc sensor over here so let me get that out and i'll test test the uh safeties on it so i'm gonna check the high and low temp on this unit it's not claiming low temp of any form but i'm just gonna hit it with some cold sauce anyhow just to see if it possibly has a surprise, you know, low temp cutoff or something like that in it. So I'm going to throw a little cold sauce onto this little NTC sensor. And if it works, of course, the charger will drop out. So saturate that, hold it there for a minute in that cold. And if it's working, we'll drop out, which would well, be nice if it did. But if not, that's fine too. No, nothing low temp wise, but hey, that's fine. Let's check high temp safety because uh, it does not appear, there does not appear to be any high temp switch on the board. So I guess this is the only form of high temp protection that I can see. I don't see a chip on board, um, high temp safety or anything like that. But it does have this NTC sensor. It's strapped right on the cells. So let's see what happens. Watch the charger. It should drop out if we have high temp thermal protection. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Let's cool it back down. And back to charging we go. So there you have the little XZ and Y 18 amp hour lithium iron phosphate teardown, the little ammo can battery that I've been using. Uh, to the viewer that requests this, I hope this answers your questions as to the internal build quality, the capacity, and other things that you'd ask me about this battery. So I hope this helps somebody else out too if you're considering a little battery like this for an ammo can build. I mean, it fits perfect in these cans. You don't need any adhesive or anything like that. It just drops right in. It's nice and snug. Diesel capacity, I've been using it quite a bit. So yeah, I'm still happy with the performance. Uh, you know, no complaints for me out of it yet. And if anything changes, I'll let you know. So anyhow, I got to put this all back together safely so I can drop it back in my little ammo can and continue using it. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this video. Y'all take care, be safe. I'll see you on the next one.